All right. Well, uh, hey everyone, welcome to the Origin Community Call. Uh, it's been a week since the uh, the airdrop of OGV, which is our new governance token uh, for Origin Dollar. Um, you know, it was great to to launch the new token, clear up some of the confusion around uh, the role of OGN, but that's just the beginning. Um, we're in a great place now uh, to push uh, both Origin Dollar and Origin Story forward. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, what's next for both products. Uh, before we jump into that, uh, we'll have a little bit of time for um, uh, any announcements, recognize some community contributions, uh, then we'll talk separately about uh, OUSD and Origin Story. We'll cover any uh, governance proposals that are open, and then uh, toward the end, we'll have some time for uh, introductions. If there's anyone who uh, has not uh, uh, said hello before um, and would like to uh, tell us uh, more about yourself and how you ended up here. Uh, just as a reminder, um, this call is, is pretty much just an open meeting. Um, we talk a lot about uh, engineering topics, uh, product uh, priorities, business development uh, initiatives. Um, and uh, so, I mean, we want to encourage everyone to participate. Um, you know, sometimes we, we have product demos, um, which, is, uh, which is always great to share. Um, but uh, this is just uh, another meeting of ours. Um, and we, uh, we like to um, be radically transparent at Origin and default to public in everything that we do. Um, so we hope that that, uh, that transparency and that culture that we have uh, is uh, uh, inspires confidence in uh, in our community. Are there any announcements that come to mind or anything to flag uh, that we should uh, make sure we don't forget? I couldn't think of anything, but uh, if you do while we're here, uh, don't hesitate to uh, speak up and let us know. Uh, we also, of course, have uh, running notes. Uh, you can see the agenda in the little uh, side chat. Uh, I think up in the top right-hand corner if you've dismissed it. Uh, you can get access to that. Thanks, Aaron, for uh, posting that again. Any community contributions that uh, that Frank or anyone else wanted to uh, to note? There's Not one. Week. Oh, sorry, yeah. Frank. Go ahead. No, no, I couldn't think of anything. But uh, go ahead, Michael. Sure. Um, yeah, just a couple things. Uh, maybe a little premature, but uh, Jeremy uh, Guzman, Mass Adoption, uh, who's here on the call, he's working on a uh, proposal for um, uh, a pool to be added to Element Finance that would um, that would tie into OUSD. So I just wanted to thank him for working on that. I think he'll have uh, a formal proposal um, uh, there in their uh, governance forum. Uh, for us to take a look at uh, maybe later today or early this week, but I uh, just wanted to say thanks for that. And then, uh, as always, um, Roland, who's kind of an extended uh, member of the family, uh, he just continues to um, you know make uh, valuable contributions in, in several ways. And um, uh, just one small thing was that he uh, filed a GitHub issue for a, a, a less than desirable user experience that he had this morning with OUSD DAP. Um, and of course, all of our code is open source. Our GitHub repositories are um, open to everyone. So, um, you know, it's a great way to contribute if you're not an engineer, not a member of the core team. If you just see, uh, you know, something we could be doing better, throw that in GitHub, flag it in Discord. Uh, one of us will add it if you don't have a GitHub account, something like that. But we use GitHub for all of our um, project management uh, and uh, tracking everything that we need to do. So uh, thanks again to Roland and, um, I uh, would love for uh, more people to jump in and do the same. Interrupt me if you uh, if you think of anything else or have anything to add. Otherwise, uh, I think we will jump into a discussion of uh, OUSD uh, near-term priorities, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, one of those, which is the uh, rollout of our governance, uh, on-chain governance uh, portal. Um, and then we'll hand it off to the story team to talk about priorities there. Um, well, I think as we go through this, you can think of this a little bit uh, like uh, a part of sprint planning. Um, we have two-week engineering sprint cycles. We've kind of gotten away from discussing that uh, here in um, in this meeting, but you know, let's let's focus primarily on um, you know high-level priorities. Um, but we'll probably get into 
uh, a little bit of the, uh, you know, what engineering would be required to make these happen and then confirm for the team uh, what the engineering priorities will be for the two-week period starting this Thursday, I think. Okay. So I will dive into those a little bit. Please don't hesitate to interrupt me and I'll try not to uh, go off on a monologue forever. But uh, just uh, a quick summary of the, let's see, six areas of focus that uh, might be a little bit much to bite off, but uh, wanted to make sure I covered everything and we can whittle it down in this meeting. Uh, the first one is the non-claim staking experience. So what I mean by that is we focused a lot on, you know, leading up to the airdrop last week, we focused a lot on um, the experience for people who are coming to claim their OGV, uh, people who were not holding their OGN on exchanges, but they were holding it in their own wallets or they earned OGV in some other way, um, like holding uh, origin dollar. Uh, they were coming there to claim OGV and we, we gave them a great experience and I think that went really well. One thing that uh, several people flagged that we could have done better, which is um, handling the, uh, the user journey where you buy OGV on an exchange or uh, you know, get it uh, some other way and you want to stake it because uh, there's this really attractive APY right now uh, for anyone who stakes OGV uh, at governance.ousd.com. And so we're, uh, we're working on uh, refining that experience. That's something that Tom Hurst uh, has been working on the last few days. Um, and so that's a, that's a top priority. Um, again, something we could have done better, uh, but there was a lot going on uh, the last few weeks. Uh, so that's an area that I think we need to continue to prioritize. Um, second one is, as we talked about many times, integrating uh, OGV, VEOGV, uh, and potentially WOUSD, wrapped OUSD into uh, as many wallets and uh, uh, token lists as we can. Um, you know, we want the experience to be great for anyone who uh, receives uh, OGV in their wallet. We want it to show up without them having to import uh, contract address or something like that. That should be taken care of very soon uh, with MetaMask. Um, that'll uh, you check the box for a lot of people, but we want to make sure that we do the same for uh, every other wallet that we can um, and every other token list. So uh, we've got a couple new people coming on board to help with that, and I'm going to personally uh, make that a top priority and, and push forward. Mike, is there any engineering work on this front, or is it purely a BD uh, work? Excuse me. It's, uh, there's some very light engineering work, which Roland has been helping us with. So I mentioned MetaMask, for example, that involved submitting a pull request to uh, one of their repositories. Um, and he's, uh, he's got that ready to go. It's just a matter of getting them to merge it and, and deploy the changes. So we might have some other uh, light work like that, but it shouldn't be much. Okay, thank you. Yep, uh, third area uh, to focus on is um, governance and value accrual for people who uh, hold OGV and stake it and in return receive vote escrowed OGV. So, um, you know, we put in all this effort for uh, to launch uh, OGV token with the airdrop. Um, now we need to deliver on the promise of, uh, of OGV. And, in, and, and one of the ways that we do that is to, uh, you know, implement the utility uh, that OGV should have. People who, uh, who stake it should be able to uh, vote uh, on you know every aspect of origin dollar um, and how uh, how it's governed, um, what strategies we use, uh, how funds are allocated across those strategies, etc. Uh, so we need to um, implement the uh, the on chain governance portal for them to be able to do that. And then uh, we also uh, you know the 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 main way that uh, that OGV will accrue value uh, directly over the long term is by earning fees as OUSD grows, as origin dollar grows. Um, so we just need to, um, we just need to wire that up. Um, we have a, a buyback contract that takes the, uh, the yield from OUSD's growth and uh, buys uh, uh, OGV uh, very soon uh, from the open market and then uh, makes it available to be claimed by uh, people who have staked their OGV. So uh, I've linked a, a doc uh, here in the notes. Um, uh, there's a little bit of engineering work to do there. And Daniel left some comments on uh, on some of my questions. If anybody else wants to weigh in there, uh, please go ahead. But otherwise, I think we that is a, a big engineering priority. I think we just need to identify an owner there and clear up any open questions that we have. Fourth area of focus would be uh, marketing and documentation. Um, this is something that 
you know, we're, uh, we've kind of neglected lately is the marketing of, uh, of OUSD and uh, more, uh, more recently OGV. So um, if you go to our website, if you go to OUSD.com, um, there's other uh, entry points uh, into our, our products and our community. Um, you're just not getting this clear message about uh, what OGV is, how to get it. Um, you have a lot of open questions about OUSD that should be answered on its marketing pages. We just kind of need to do a scrub uh, on all of that. Um, most of this is not engineering yet, uh, but it will involve engineering once we identify everything that we need to do. And then of course, uh, it, uh, it starts with, well, maybe not starts with, not a blocker, but a uh, really critical piece here is, um, is hiring uh, a super uh, superstar uh, marketing team. So that's something we're actively working on to, to complement um, uh, engineering and product and everyone that's already here. Uh, let's see, after that or um, along the way, we need to shore up the OUSD yield. It's been, um, you know, the, the APY that we've been producing for the past uh, maybe six months or so has been uh, falling and uh, much lower uh, than we need it to be. Um, and so we've talked off and on about a handful of different strategies that we, uh, that we could potentially leverage, um, uh, but we have not uh, made a decision on which one we uh, do or do not want to pursue. Um, and then we need to also identify the engineering that would be required to roll it out. As Josh uh, often says, our APY is, uh, you know, the number one uh, way that we market uh, to people who uh, end up coming to OUSD. It's the thing that um, that everyone cares about right now, while uh, OUSD is is primarily uh, uh, a high yield um, account uh, for people. So um, that's like a critical piece. Like when uh, as we ramp up marketing, we need to be able to uh, to market. Uh, an attractive yield. That's the uh, core value proposition uh, of OUSD. And then the last thing, thanks uh, Frank and Daniel for reminding us that we have uh, this uh, improvement proposal um, where the code was written a while back, but we have not deployed um, this extra uh, defense um, uh, mechanism for uh, OUSD in the event that one of the uh, underlying uh, collateral uh, stable coins were to lose its peg. We already have ways that we uh, defend or you know mitigate that risk and uh, OUSD's vault performed really well uh, when uh, Tether had a brief uh, depegging a couple of months ago. But we just wanna um, go above and beyond and be extra conservative and take every measure that we can um, to protect OUSD in an unlikely event like that. So that's uh, that's something that we should go ahead and do. Uh, I'll stop talking uh, and then we can get into uh, the uh, um, specifics about what it means to roll out the on-chain governance. But uh, before we do that, let me stop for any questions or uh, anything that I missed or anything that shouldn't have been on that list. Okay, we should launch Maya strategy, right? That's still um, still in the plan, right? Uh, well, that depends on our uh, position with uh, Tether. If we were to launch MetaStrategy, we'd have to, you know, increase our exposure to Tether again, which I think we should do at some point, uh, barring any um, uh, unexpected outcome with Tether. Uh, but that's my understanding is that uh, we would have to, you know, basically uh, go back into three pool, uh, the curve strategy, um, if we wanted to do that, which uh, again, I think we should do, but I don't know if we're ready. Daniel, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I think it's in a, definitely an eventually kind of thing. Um, as long as Tether stays stable, um, I don't know that you know it would have uh, you know several. It wouldn't be uh, fully exposing OUSD to Tether. It would be uh, a couple million or so. Um, well, maybe six or ten. Uh, we basically need to send that out and see what we think about it. Uh, it's a decision we need to analyze and make. Tether has stopped uh, free falling. It's still going down by, uh, you know, tens or twenties of millions a day, um, but that's no longer uh, 500 millions a day. So it's better at the moment than it was. Well, we're not going to go 100% in uh, to that pool right away anyway, so we could run it in parallel to our other strategy and we could slowly ramp up. Uh, and that way we've, we, we, you know, can feel comfortable about the amount of risk we're taking there and everything can be um, ready to go. And it's just a matter of uh, how, how many fun, how much funds we want to allocate to that strategy. 
Man, man, that makes sense. And uh, Doman was ready to launch it, but he's off for a couple of weeks. So the plan was for him to launch it when he comes back. So that gives us a little bit uh, of extra time to figure out, um, you know, how much, you know, how much fun do we put in there if we do it. That sounds good. Sounds Daniel, great. I, I, mm-hmm. I was going to, uh, thanks Frank for, uh, for asking about that. Daniel, I remember when we, uh, when we talked about Tether Risk a few weeks ago, uh, I had posed the question, what would you want to see um, to be willing to, uh, you know, maintain that the level of uh, exposure that we had uh, at the time um, or, you know, fully reincorporate Tether back into OUSD? And I didn't do a great job of capturing uh, what those uh, things were. Um, we don't have to identify them right now, but uh, we, we might want to uh, put those on paper and, um, and yeah. enumerate them. Okay. Uh, you know, they have a supposedly an upcoming audit coming. Um, that would be a good sign if that came through. Um, and as well as just a month or two of stability. Um, and we've at least stopped the diving at this point. Cool. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments on priorities? Uh, yeah, actually. Um so what is actually the respective priorities? Because so uh, we have limited, you know, resources. I want to make sure that the team focuses on the, you know, the top priority first. Um, are these near term priorities listed in order? Certainly up for debate, but um, I think I rank them. Yeah, approximately in the right order, um, not necessarily based on uh, the value that we get from them, but like, um, you know, value relative to scope. Uh, because, like, I, I would say that number five, shoring up the yield, is probably where we get the biggest bang for our buck. But that's like a, the, that's a big project, um, and I don't want to like, I don't want that to block Tom on you know uh, resolving the or refining the non-claim staking experience, for example. Um, so we can certainly discuss uh, rearranging these. I think that maybe a next step would be let me um, kind of extract what the engineering elements of these are, put them in GitHub if they're not already there, and then we can use our, uh, our project view in GitHub uh, to, to you know, stack rank them. That's good to have. Thank you. Cool. But yeah, if anybody has opinions on um, if they should be in a different order or, or something like that, please comment in the doc or uh, let us know here. Let's take a few minutes to talk about uh, the governance rollout. Um, there are a few things that came to mind for me. Uh, one is, I mean, I guess I put them in two buckets, one, the user experience and two, the contracts. So, you know, front end, back end, you might say. Um, for the user experience, I, Tom was telling me, uh, Tom Hurst was telling me that uh, since we last worked on the front end, uh, the contracts had changed, which makes sense. I know we were making uh, some changes along the way as we were approaching the, the token launch. Um, so we just kind of need to go back and take inventory of uh, what needs to be fixed there. Um, so that's something I think he would probably uh, work on, uh, maybe in conjunction with other Tom this week. And then uh, I personally have not really played with the uh, the front end experience in a really long time. And I haven't, you know, done a thorough audit of the UX or anything like that. I haven't really compared it to, um, you know, other governance forums. So we should definitely do that, and you know, spec what uh, what features are are critically missing, if any. Uh, although I doubt there are, um, and any other UX improvements that we want to make, you know, low hanging fruit, uh, without trying to uh, to boil the ocean. I think the main thing is just get this launched uh, in a minimal form. And one other thing to to note about it is that uh, you know the the nature of binding on chain governance is that. Um, it's not it, it's not the uh, most like user friendly thing for the average person who wants to make a proposal. So I think that you know we're primarily uh, as the core team we're going to be the primary users of this thing. Um, it's just a matter of uh, transitioning the ownership from. Uh, well, let me let me clarify that we're going to be the primary users of this thing over the next couple of weeks. Um, over time, we definitely want uh, this to be a community driven. Um, uh, governance for sure. But uh, I think the main thing that we just need to do when we're ready is uh, hand over the governance of the contracts from uh, the multi-sig to uh, the EOGV holders. 
Um, and then, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll primarily be the ones uh, submitting uh, on-chain proposals uh, and, uh, and then encourage other people to vote on them. So um, what, uh, what else is missing from this, uh, this short list, if anything, or, or what, what did I get wrong? And just to clarify, so this is an overlap. This is overlapping with priority number three in the near term priorities, right? Governance and value accrual. Yeah, sorry, that's a little unclear. This is just me kind of expanding on that because we haven't really scoped it. We haven't uh, talked yeah, about what it means in the time. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I get it correctly. Right yeah, thanks. But I, I think you got it right. I think we need to take an inventory on the front end of you know what's the, the work left to do. Uh, maybe we should enable it on staging or, you know, figure out a way to, you know, for the committee and us to, to play with it and, you know, in a test environment uh, to figure out how we, what are the changes needed to, um, to productionize it on the, on the UI side. And then on the, on the back and on the contract side, I think the main priority would be to, uh, to exercise, to test the contract on mainnet, um, point the governance contract against uh, a blank contract so that we can make sure that proposals can be executed and and that the time lock you know works as expected all this uh, all these things we don't want to absolutely don't want to take any risk on this and give governance um uh, prior to that this is a no-no for sure and uh, one other bullet that i had there that i forgot to mention is um there's going to be some confusion because we have we're going to continue to have our off-chain uh, snapshot space where um, people can signal uh, proposals that they want to make and you know get some affirmation before they uh, before they make an on-chain uh, proposal um, and then we also will I, I think maybe forever or at least for the foreseeable future we'll continue to use uh, snapshot and off-chain proposals for uh, the funds allocation vote um, that we do every week for AUSD because it just doesn't make any sense to do that uh, on chain, and uh, and there will be other things uh, I'm sure that will come up that make sense to do off chain. So we'll just start with an on chain proposal, granting you know the authority to strategists or whoever uh, it may be uh, to uh, to um, take action based on the off chain uh, proposals. Anything else uh, that anyone wanted to add or that we might have missed? And maybe just one thing to take into consideration before we switch is um, uh, once we switch to VOGV governance, it's going to be a little slower to roll out uh, contract upgrades and things like that. Right now, it's two days, and I think uh, with VOGV, it would be five days, I believe. So, um, you know, we have quite a few changes, I think, uh, in the pipeline, like smaller grades. So we might want to do to run these smaller grades before uh, we make the governance switch. Like for example, example OIP four. It's ready. It's coded. It's ready. Yeah. Uh, we shouldn't wait uh, on that. Yeah. Totally. Uh, and uh, you're just referring to the time lock uh, between the. the yeah. Two and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, if no one else uh, has anything to add, um, we can move on to talk about origin story updates. Uh, but. Um, let me know if you if you had any questions or comments first. Linus, you want to take it away? Sure. Um, hey everyone. Um, a couple things I uh, wanted to highlight today on Origin Story. Uh, first, just a uh, an update on how OGN staking is going. Uh, we launched OGN staking, uh, and the first season of staking um, launched simultaneously with when <clears throat> the OGV airdrop claim window opened up. Uh, and we got um, a pretty good reception, uh, um, both on the flow uh, as well as sort of the value proposition uh, of OGN staking, where 100% of the story fees uh, go back to OGN stakeholders. Uh, and folks are rewarded in Ethereum fees. Uh, and over time, we anticipate throughout the season, there may be some bonuses of OGN as well. Um, since launching about a week ago, uh, 6.4 million OGN has been staked and we're seeing uh, a steady uh, increase uh, daily. So uh, this is good news. Uh, good news that the value proposition is uh, resonating with OGN stakeholders and folks are uh, committed enough to uh, stake their tokens uh, and lock them up for the, um, uh, well, uh, they can be un unstaked at any time, but you would lose rewards. But folks are finding the value proposition to be compelling. 
um, and are staking. Uh, so this is this is good news. Um, so we're we're continuing to watch uh, the the reception and feedback from staking, uh, and over time, uh, periodically, we will also be um, putting in more story fees into the Ethereum pool. We've gotten a number of questions about the ETH rewards uh, not updating in real time. <clears throat> and so we have not set up real-time streaming of the fees into the pool. Uh, instead, we will be uh, uh, putting in fees uh, periodically throughout the season. Uh, but you have our uh, commitment as uh, as we voted on that 100% of the fees ge uh, generated during the season will, will go into the pool. But you will see updates um, soon. Uh, to that number, and we'll, we'll be sure to uh, call those out uh, at this community call as well. Uh, the next topic I wanted to touch on is new planned marketplace launches. Uh, as we discussed, uh, there are a number of confirmed partners uh, that that we've signed on to launch our new branded marketplace. Uh, we are just working with them to line up marketing moments. Um, this is a great moment to bring our communities together, the origin community, as well as the communities of collectors um for these uh marketplaces so we really want to make sure we're lining them up and they, they have their moment um so with that we actually do have uh, an announcement later today um our next partner will be serial club uh and we're going to uh, announce and officially launch their marketplace over at twitter spaces at 5 p.m specific um so that'll be co-hosted by origin protocol with uh, some of the team members of serial club to kind of talk about the collaboration talk about their plans uh for Serial Club is an NFT project and why they're excited about a marketplace. Um, so that's today. Uh, we will actually have more partners conf uh, uh, launching over the next couple of weeks. Um, so you'll, you'll actually see a lot more of a steady flow of new partners. Um, the marketplace has been built in a way uh, that is quite scalable. Uh, and so now it's really just a matter of um, confirming with partners, uh, getting them excited about this and and going through the launch. And you'll sort of see activity will continue to stack on these marketplaces as we line up more partners. And we expect that, that flywheel of NFT collectors from their communities will start to get to know Origin and vice versa. And uh, we think that there will be some interesting network effects as we as we scale up to dozens and dozens of marketplaces. The last piece that I will touch on is a roadmap update. Um, one of the most exciting things that we're actively working right now on is native listings. Uh, so today on the marketplace, the way we've started is an aggregation of all of the liquidity across Web3. Um, so the marketplace really value proposition is you can see and purchase uh, NFTs that are listed on OpenSea, LooksRare, X2Y2, and NFTX among other marketplaces that we'll be adding in the future. Uh, so this is a really great way to just kind of like see all the liquidity in one place. It's it's almost a better experience than even just going to OpenSea because maybe an NFT that you like is not not listed on NFT uh, on OpenSea. Um, so that's step one uh, to really just bootstrap the usage and get that habit going and adding value to the collector. Uh, what's next here is native listings, right? This is where Origin as well as the creator are going to start generating revenue. Um, and we expect that to be uh, the first version of this to be completed uh, within a couple of weeks. Uh, we're excited that uh, we could be in a position to launch this on our marketplaces in August. Um, so what that will allow people to do is to uh, natively list their NFT on the official marketplace uh, and for buyers to buy. And from there, the, that marketplace fee, a portion of that will actually go to origin and right into the staking pool. So you can imagine that once we do this, we'll start generating revenue on these marketplaces. Once we start uh, scaling out to dozens and dozens of marketplaces, this can actually be quite interesting where uh, these marketplaces fees start adding up uh, and really just kind of like uh, on a continuous basis, uh, add, add more uh, ETH rewards into the pool. The next thing that we're, we're actually working on here is infrastructure and data improvements. Um, as we discussed, we're, we're building this platform. We are expecting and hoping that we can we can stack many, many more uh, marketplaces on top of each other. But we also want to maintain a really great uh, customer experience, uh, both sort of responsiveness of the site, as well as the freshness and robustness of the data. Um, the aggregation piece of it is only as good as uh, the breadth of data that we could have, but also just the responsiveness. If a listing is no longer available, we want to make sure that um, our, our marketplace is showing the best data in real time. Uh, so there's a stream of work of very cool things to make sure that we're having a diversity of data uh, sources to make sure we have the best, best quality uh, kind of experience, particularly as we scale out marketplaces.
Um, I will pause there for now and open it up to any questions. All right. Well, thanks. Thank Back you. Thank you, Micah. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm here. I, uh, I, I was paying attention. Um, I was going to, um, going to get a link uh, that I was going to drop here in the, uh, in the chat, uh, which is uh, a governance proposal that I think is wrapping up in, uh, let's see, maybe an hour or so. Um, this was something I submitted over the weekend uh, to, um, to get uh, approval from the community to transition OUSD governance. Uh, this is the off-chain informal governance that currently happens at vote.org and protocol.com. We want to transition uh, the OUSD portion of that to uh, a new snapshot space um, so that it can be uh, governed uh, by uh, VEOGV instead of OGN in accordance with um, the utility uh, of uh, OGV that we've proposed. Um, so that there's currently unanimous approval on that proposal. It's met uh, quorum. So uh, feel free to vote if you want to, but unless uh, there's a, a complete change in the tide there over the next hour, then uh, we will uh, roll out uh, a separate snapshot, uh, snapshot space and uh, You'll notice that I don't yet have the uh, funds allocation proposal that we do every week. I don't have that up yet on Snapshot because uh, assuming this gets approved, I want to do that on the new uh, new Snapshot space. So, so um, I'll take care of that uh, later this afternoon and uh, then everyone will be able to vote on um, uh, OUSD funds allocation across different strategies uh, later on today. Uh, but of course, you'll need to be holding uh, VEOGV to do that instead of OGN. Um, everyone's welcome to submit uh, new governance proposals there, and you're also uh, encouraged to discuss them in uh, our governance channel in Discord if you uh, if you want to um, kind of take the temperature of the community before doing that. <laughs> Anything uh, else governance related that I uh, might have missed? Frank, I think we'll uh, we'll catch up a little bit later about uh, making sure all the settings are right on uh, on the new one before we launch it. Yeah, let's troubleshoot together. Cool. All right, uh, that leaves us a little bit of time uh, to uh, for introductions. Uh, if there's anyone who's new to the call, or if you've been here before and you haven't taken the opportunity to introduce yourself, uh, you're welcome to do that now. Feel free to unmute. Let us know how you ended up here, what you're working on, uh, what you're excited about, anything along those lines. Um, hey, I'll just say hi here. Uh, my name is Zach Skolnick, or Zach Vadith, and I've uh, just been uh, actually interviewing for a role here. Um, so uh, yeah, very hopeful, very you know, uh, excited about your protocol, and um, yeah, ho hopefully get to work on some PRs with you guys soon. So uh, hi, everyone. Great Zach, to have you here, Zach. Having you here. Yeah, thanks for being here, Zach. Uh, great to have you. Look forward to uh, uh, to seeing pull requests. That'd be amazing. Anybody else want to uh, say hi before we wrap it up? There's always uh, next week. Um, we'll be here at the same time, same place, uh, and would love for you to uh, join us again. There are a couple of action items that I captured. One for myself uh, to move um, the uh, engineering priorities over to GitHub. Uh, and then I'll share that uh, updated project view in uh, in Discord. And then I volunteered Tom Hurst uh, to uh, maybe uh, wire on the governance features and deploy them to staging environment because I I think we would just reuse the environment that we you know we've been using over the last few weeks. Tell me if I'm wrong there. Um, but uh, I, I'm also not sure how we do that without. Um, inadvertently deploying them to production. Maybe there's an environment flag or something like that that's already set up. Uh, so anyway, we can follow up on that after the call. Um, uh, but unless there are any closing thoughts, then uh, we will see you some other time. Until then. See you on the blockchain. Yeah.